Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the daily stock market and look at that, a slightly green day in the stock market on Friday. Tesla leading the pack up 2.6%. Not much movement going on. We had an extremely exciting earnings week with Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and many more all reporting earnings last week, okay? Many members have made money in our Discord from earnings last week. There's just member after member making money in our Discord group. So if you want to join that, it's going to be a great time because we have another huge earnings week coming up next. Meta calls were up 200%, $1,800 as you can see there. And Amazon call up $687. With bot calls, we have an AI that gives out strike prices and expiration dates on call option and put options in our Discord. So make sure you do join that. If you're not in our Discord, you are missing out. But in today's video, what we're going to talk about is earnings week. We're going to do an overview of earnings week ahead. Okay, so first up, we have Monday before the open. We have SoFi Norwegian reporting, which will be a little bit interesting there. After the close, we have MGM Resorts, another travel stock reporting. We also have MicroStrategy reporting, which will be interesting to see how they report their earnings with the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency surge that's going on right now. Tuesday before the open, we have Uber reporting another travel company. We have Pfizer, we have BP, which will be an interesting one to be playing. And if you want to see what options I'm personally taking out, by the way, call options on BP, put options on BP or Uber, AMD is another huge one that's reporting this week. Make sure you join the close friends list on Instagram or the Discord, and you can actually see what I'm buying exactly when I'm buying. So we have BP and Marathon reporting on Tuesday before the open, both oil companies. We've seen how oils reported in the past, which is a good thing. Okay, so call options could be a possibility on oil for Tuesday. After the close, we have AMD reporting. We saw Intel reporting. We saw good things with Intel. NVIDIA is another big competitor. NVIDIA is reporting later on in earnings season. So how AMD does could depict how NVIDIA reports in the future. We also have Ford, which if you look at uh, General Motors, that could give you a good idea what to do with Ford. Maybe some puts on Ford could be a good idea. We have Starbucks. Okay, fast forwarding to Wednesday before the close. We have CVS Health. We have Wingstop. We have another oil company, Philips 66. We have SunPower, okay, which is a solar company. And then after the close, we have Qualcomm reporting. And then we have some other growth stocks like Sunrun and Fastly and Etsy all reporting as well. Then we have another oil company, Marathon Oil, reporting Wednesday after the close. Thursday before the open, we have some more growth companies like Datadog, Moderna. We have Peloton. We have Shell, another oil company. So oil is going to be reporting all week. And we also have Peloton and Royal Caribbean. Remember, if we go to uh, Monday before the open, we can see Norwegian is reporting then. And Thursday before the open, Royal is reporting. So it could give us some indicators on what to trade on Royal based on how Norwegian a cruise line does. Okay. Now, this is when it gets really interesting because Thursday after the close, we have one of the biggest stocks in the entire world reporting Apple. OK, so that's going to really depend and dictate the market could trade down or up based off Apple's earnings. We have Shopify. We have Block. We have Coinbase. We have DraftKings and Lyft and Carvana. So a lot of companies are reporting on Thursday. And needless to say, this is a huge, huge earnings week. Now, MicroStrategy's earnings on Monday after the close could help us look at Block and Coinbase. We also have Lyft reporting Thursday after the close and how Uber does Tuesday before the open could dictate on how Lyft does as well. So those are going to be some good things to at least be tracking or at least be aware of. And Friday, all the apes and all the meme stock investors are going to gather up because AMC is reporting their earnings on Friday along with Fubo TV. 
Now, the first stock that we're going to briefly dive into is reporting Tuesday after the close. It's AMD at $89 per share. Okay, in the last month, they're down 7.15%. In the last three months, they're up 20%, and they even peaked as high as 35% at $100 per share. They hit that psychological resistance and they've been trading down from $100 per share. Now they're down 8%, okay? And then the last year, they're about even, but it's a very volatile stock going down around 34% and then bouncing back up very consistently. In the last five years, you can see the growth and if you don't know much about AMD, we can see that they engage in provisions of semiconductor businesses. So that's what they're really about is the semiconductors. It operates through the following segments, computing and graphics and enterprise embedding and semi-custom. The computing and graphics segment include desktop computers and notebook processors and chipsets, uh, discrete and integrated graphic processing units or GPUs. Okay, data center and professional GPUs and development services. The enterprise embedded and semi-custom segment include server and embedded processors, semi-custom systems on chip products. So basically they do all the chips in your computers and notebooks. Probably not all, but you know, there's a good portion of chips that they supply to computers. We can see that the market cap is 144 billion, so it's significantly smaller than something like Nvidia. The PE ratio is 106. And make sure you're subscribed with post notifications on because in the future, we're gonna be doing a direct comparison to Nvidia and AMD and Intel all against each other to see who is the best stock at the current price. So here we see what awaits for AMD and Q1 earnings. We see that it is set to release on May 2nd, the company's first quarter revenues to be 5.3 billion, okay, which indicates a year over year decline of 10%. The Zach's consensus estimate, which is just basically an analyst analysis. Okay, we see that the estimate for them is the revenues to be pegged at 5.3 billion, which is on track with what AMD is suggesting, which we should see a decline of 9.89% from the year ago quarter reported. The consensus estimate for the first quarter earnings is pegged at 56 cents per share, unchanged in the last 30 days. The figure in indicates a decline of 50% on the bottom line on a year over year basis, which is not a good thing. Okay, AMD's earnings beat the analyst estimate in three of the trailing four quarters and only missing once. The earnings surprise being 7.6% on average. Let's see how things are shaping up for the upcoming announcement. Some factors at play. AMD first quarter top line growth is expected to have suffered from lower client segment revenues due to weak PC market and stiff competition. Okay, per another analyst, Gartner's latest report, global PC shipments totaled 55.2 million units in the first quarter of 2023, down 30% year over year. Now, 2021 and 2022 did have the pandemic driven um gaming sales on its side um, everyone was indoors playing games at that moment and now that that hype has died down it's getting back to normalcy and people are going back into sports and other things for the last at least 12 months by now so needless to say amd is a risky one it seems like their revenues are going to be down their eps is going to be down but remember they do surprise and they come in a little bit higher than expectations on the EPS typically, which is a good thing to consider. However, I'm feeling bearish overall on AMD's earnings. And if you want to see exactly what I'm taking, remember, join the close friends list. Just message me on Instagram. It's that easy to get in the close friends list. Now, as for the next one that we have to talk about briefly is Ford Motors at $11.85, down 8.92% 8 in the last three months, and they're down 18.7% in the last year. This has been a very good swing trading stock in our Discord and close friends list because, as you can see, it rises up 30, 40%, and then it falls down 20%. It rises up. 15% and then continues to fall. So it's been following this pattern overall. 
and it's forming a downward pattern overall too. So the next move that Ford makes, um, technically speaking, should be a downward move below $10 per share. However, earnings is more about fundamentals and less about technicals. So anything could happen on the earnings call. So let's dive into it a little bit more. By the way, they have a negative PE ratio. They're not a positive earning company. They have a huge dividend payout right now, 10.1% with a market cap of 47.3 billion. If you guys caught my dividend stock video on YouTube, this was the highest paying dividend stock at 10%, by the way. Um, Ford also has 56% um, institutional ownership, which is definitely something consi to consider. Now here we have the Zacks consensus pull up on Yahoo Finance again. We see the earnings preview Ford Motors Company Q1 earnings expected to decline. Also, Wall Street expects a year over year decline in earnings on higher revenues when Ford Motor reports results for the quarter ended in March 2023. While this widely known consensus outlook is important in gauging the company's earnings picture, a powerful factor that could impact near-term stock price is how the actual results compare to these estimates. The stock might move higher if these key numbers top expectations in the earnings report, which is expected to be released on May 2nd. On the other hand, if they miss, the stock may move lower. While management's decisions of business conditions on the earnings call will mostly determine the sustainability of the immediate price change and future earnings expectations, which just means guidance, what they're um, going to be talking about on the future, how the rest of 2023 is going to play out, it is still worth having a handicapping insight into the odds of a positive EPS surprise. Okay, so here we can see that the analyst analysis, the estimate, which is 36 cents per share in its upcoming report, which represents a year over year change of negative 5% loss on their bottom line. Okay, revenues are expected to be up 36.4 billion, up 13% from a year ago, which is a great thing to see on the revenues. They are up. So those are some numbers to be watching. The consensus EPS estimate for the quarter has been revised 2.7% higher in the last 30 days to the current levels. This is essentially a reflection of how the covering analysis have collectively reassessed their initial estimates over this period. So overall, whenever you're playing earnings on any stock, it's going to be risky. And that's why you want to be in a group so you can make informed decisions based off everyone's analysis and the good thing about the discord is if everyone spends one hour doing research and there's 50 or 100 people that do the research that's like spending 50 to 100 hours of doing research compared to just doing one hour by yourself so that's why birds who flock together stay together if you want to go fast fly alone but if you want to fly far make sure you're flying together in a flock okay so that's our motto in our discord Always fly together if you want to go far. And if you want to go fast, which you might crash, then try it alone. Um, but it always pays off to be in a group. So overall, I think that Ford Motors can move under $10 per share. The technicals are backing it up right now. Um, their earnings could be a downward surprise. So we kind of see it sporadic here all over the place. The last two earnings they actually missed. So they are on trend to miss again on earnings. If you want to see exactly what puts I'm taking out or if I'm taking out calls later on in the week, go ahead and join the Discord or the close friends list. You can see all that information there. Now we did spend a little bit more time on the earnings calendar in the beginning of this video. So we didn't get a deep dive into more than two stocks in this video. If you want me to deep dive more than two stocks in the next video, hit the subscribe button and comment below saying that you only went over two stocks, not three stocks. Go ahead and give me a hard time in the comments and I will do better next time for you guys. If you appreciate me taking time out of my weekend and out of my busy Sunday to make these videos for you guys, just hit the like button and I'll keep making these videos for you guys. It's that simple. If you want to join the close friends list who now has over thousands of members, message me here at the daily stock market on Instagram. Now over 200,000 followers on Instagram and 741 posts. 
Thank you guys for all the love and support you have been showing throughout Instagram and YouTube. If you want to see some success stories, click on success number eight, success number seven. There's hundreds and hundreds of positive testimonials, people making thousands and thousands of dollars every single day on the close friends list and the discord. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.